Hello, Lindsay Elliott from Lindsay Elliott Coaching, and I'm back today with, with another Ask Me Anything question from someone in my community. So Maria writes in to me and she says, can I ask you to help me with my problem? On Saturday, I sent a message to a bereaved mum like myself. And she says in brackets, this could happen with anyone, but some people make the trigger worse than others. She never got back to my, mas- my message and it really upset me. And my mind started trying to find ways to protect me. And worst of all, it triggers me to have insomnia. I've been in this understanding for a while now and I'm aware of what's happening, but it's still so painful and inconvenient that I have to go through the process of trying not to take it seriously until I get it out of my system. My mind was even telling me to block her number, trying its best to protect me. Good to see that. I believe that it is rude not to acknowledge someone when they've reached out to you, as it's something I would never do. It's so easy to get back to someone these days, even with just a small emoji as acknowledgement. Hope this makes sense feeling so desperate over something as small as this, but it feels easier at the moment to not have her in my life, even though she's been a great support in the past. They've been on a bereavement journey. She's been on a bereavement journey longer than Maria. Thank you so much for your help. So thank you so much for sending in your question, Maria. It's a fascinating question, and I'm sorry that you're suffering in this, Um, but I hope that these points will be helpful for you. So the first part about that it's so painful and inconvenient to have to go through this process of trying not to take it seriously. So this is something that I have experienced myself and also seen a lot with people who are in this under, this particular sort of understanding of the mind, which um, is really that our thoughts are the thing that is creating our reality. It's not life out there that's creating our thoughts and feelings. It's a thought itself that is creating it in response to life. And when we've been in this understanding and we know that it's our thinking, our thought, capital T thought, that is creating our feeling, it can be a really common place or a next kind of step to then say, well, I know that this is just thought. I know it isn't the truth of life. And so I don't see why I should have to feel this. Why do I have to feel all of this discomfort? Why do I have to feel all of this resentment or upset or disappointment when I know it's just my thinking creating the feeling? And whilst there is some truth to that, it's also not helpful, I think, to try and then push away the feelings and not actually feel it. Because just because something is coming from our own thinking, our own perception, our own perspective, doesn't mean that we shouldn't feel it. And I think really that's what life is asking of us, is to feel everything that is passing through us, every experience, to feel it fully and to let it pass on through. And I think sometimes when we get caught in, oh, I know I'm just feeling my thinking, so I'm, I don't need to feel this. And honestly, this is an experience that I still have now, is that it actually kind of sometimes can sort of hold it in place a bit longer because it's kind of like the, and I don't, this isn't 100% true, but I've just noticed this in my own experience, that it's kind of like, oh, I know this feeling's coming from my thinking. It's a really uncomfortable feeling. I know it's not the truth of the situation, so I'm not going to feel it. And then it kind of gets butted up against that. And then it kind of goes away again. And then it sort of keeps coming up to be felt. And I do wonder if sometimes if we just sort of let ourselves feel it, be in all of that discomfort and resentment and disappointment, it would pass on through. So it isn't that it's inconvenient and painful, as again, the mind, see a mind, the mind is always going to try to talk us out of trying to feel something. So not only is the mind creating the experience of the situation here, as in that this, your friend hasn't replied to you, it's also then trying to convince you that you don't need to feel the feelings and that it's inconvenient and that it's painful and that this shouldn't be happening. So that's something just to really catch on to that it's more thought that is saying this doesn't need to be felt this is inconvenient this is painful I don't want this so as much as we can when we have those difficult and painful feelings as much as we can knowing that the feelings aren't necessarily telling us the capital T truth about the situation but that it's still totally safe and okay and appropriate that we allow ourselves to feel it really helps us in these situations and I have got a video all about how to feel not how to feel but pointing in the direction of feeling difficult feelings which I will link to in the description below so just to summarize just because we know that our feelings are absolutely coming from our thought in the moment 
and that isn't the whole truth of life, it isn't the whole perception, doesn't mean that we don't still need to feel stuff and that it isn't important to feel it and to allow ourselves to feel it and that it's in the clamping down of it that truly the resistance to it that actually makes it more painful. Um, so seeing also that it is a story that your mind has made up that she should have replied and what time frame under which she should have replied. So I know it looks so real and true, Maria. I think it would probably look real and true to my mind as well and to lots of other people's minds, but not everybody's mind. It looks so real and true that why couldn't she have just acknowledged it? Why couldn't she have just done a simple reply? But I want you just to pull back and see that you have absolutely no idea why she hasn't replied and your mind has made up the story that it's rude. And there could be a million and one reasons. It could be, you know, I could go through a few, I could give your mind some of the reasons, you know, she was busy, she forgot, she has her own something difficult that she's dealing with, which means she's not available. I don't know. But what I want you to see is that your mind has innocently picked one reason, this is rude, and made it real, made it seem like it's the truth of the situation, and it really isn't. And because then it's saying this is rude and this is painful that she hasn't done this, I also need to block you out of my life. That's another story that my mind likes to make up, that I need to protect you from this feeling, I need to protect you from this person because they're not reliable or they're rude or they're inconsiderate, whatever it is the mind is telling you. And truly, you're, I know your mind is trying to help you, but it's totally pointing you in the wrong direction. Because what it's pointing you to is keep focused on me, keep listening to me, I'm going to keep you safe. And the mind doesn't have any capacity to keep us safe. And what I want you to see is that all of the time, what your mind thinks it's trying to protect you from is your own thought and feeling. So you are never actually feeling her and her lack of reply, you are only ever feeling you. You are only ever feeling your response, your thought in the moment, your feeling about what she has done, your mind's own judgment of it. And so when we kind of get caught up in, this person made me feel this and so I need to cut them out, this person creates these feelings in me and so it's too painful to be around them. Even though you've actually acknowledged, and I think this is more the truth of it, she's been really supportive. She's been really helpful. So why would you want to permanently cut someone out because they didn't reply to a message on your time scale? Like I know probably when you can pull back from that, you can see that. So it isn't the truth of the situation that she's no longer helpful to you or potentially a good friend. It's just your mind has totally made up this story that it's rude and that it needs to protect you from it. But if you can see that you aren't ever feeling her, you are only ever feeling you, your own thoughts about what she has done and that this is going to pass and it's going to change, then that makes it a very, very different situation where you don't need to cut her out because she isn't the issue. The issue is your mind creating a story and then you innocently believing it. And it is innocent. We do get really caught up in what the mind is trying to tell us about things. But if we can see this, not in just in difficult conflicts in relationships, but in all relationships, we are only ever feeling ourselves. It's quite mind blowing. Now that doesn't mean that if, because I can probably hear, I think I can hear someone's mind somewhere worrying to say, well, what about an abuse, in, a, in an abusive situation? Yes, you're only ever feeling your own feeling and thinking about it, but of course that doesn't mean that you wouldn't keep yourself safe. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we stay in abusive relationships, we stay where we're being hurt. Absolutely not. Of course we exit those and we keep ourselves physically safe. But what I'm saying is in any relationship, you're only ever feeling you and the other person's only ever feeling them. And that's why it's totally safe and OK. Um, so the last thing that I want to say is because you mentioned a couple of times about triggers. And I think triggers are they're quite, it's quite a buzzword at the moment. And it can feel like something like um, I hear, hear a lot of people talking about how I don't want to be triggered. This really triggers me. 
uh, this creates feelings in me. This I don't want this. This is triggering me. And so I have to avoid it. And if we live in that space of this is triggering something in me, this is causing a feeling in me, then our life just gets narrower and narrower and the experiences that we want to have get narrower and narrower. So there's two things, and I do appreciate that sometimes we do have like flashbacks or triggers or something where it kind of like it seems to trigger something from the past back into our current reality. But there's two things I just want to point out about this that I hope will be helpful is again, this same thing that I've already said, nothing is actually ever triggering us. It's only we happen to have an old psychological pattern that kind of comes out in certain situations. So again, it's not possible for a situation to trigger a feeling in this. What happens is our own, our mind picks up a habitual thought that it's thought a million times in this situation and presents it to us. And if we can think about flashbacks or triggers, as I like how Dr. Bill Pettit puts it, he calls it an old psychological file. So it's like our mind, in like in a nanosecond, is presented with a situation that in some way seems like something that happened in the past, when maybe you were rejected or someone was mean to you or didn't reply to a message and it hurt. And it's kind of like, oh, this is feeling a bit familiar. And it picks out the old psychological file of the story that was made about it, what the me what the feelings mean, what the story is. And it presents it to you in, in now, in real time. But particularly with things like flashbacks, it's really helpful to know that it isn't happening here and now. And that the trigger or the flashback is totally a thought created experience. And so whilst it may feel really uncomfortable, it is really safe to feel because it's it's not what's happening now. And maybe it's asking to be felt. I don't know. But it's not what's actually here and now. So when we know that we can't be triggered by something and that even if we were triggered by something, it's still totally safe to feel because it's our own thought stream, our own feeling stream, our own perception that we're feeling. It gives us so much more freedom just to be in life, to be in situations, to be around any kind of people that we want to be around. And again, not being around people who might be hurting us or harming us, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that sometimes it's just an old psychological file that is being picked up and presented to us as real and true now. And it simply isn't the case. It's just an old memory. It's old thinking being presented in the now. So I hope that's helpful. So I hope this has been helpful, Maria, to soften some of the edges around this and to help point you in a few different directions to see this situation differently. Because, you know, truly we get we get this kind of interaction with people all the time where we have an expectation about how they're going to respond and they don't. And then our mind makes up a story about it, fills in because, you know, as I've talked about in many videos before, wherever there's uncertainty or the unknown, a mind will absolutely jump in and try to fill in the blanks. And that's all it's done here. You don't know why she hasn't replied. You wanted her to reply. Your expectation was that she would reply. And your mind simply filled in an unknown, an empty space, a void with a story. But that's all it is. Unless you were able to actually ask her, why didn't you reply? And she gave you an honest response. That's the only way that you can know what's going on here. And that you're totally safe in whatever you're feeling because you're feeling you and it's going to move, it's going to change, it's going to pass. So thank you so much for sending in your question, Maria. If you would like me to ask and um, answer your ask me anything, please do send me an email. The email's on the screen now and I'll also link it in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend. That really helps me to reach more people. Thanks so much for watching.